Hello, people of the internet, this is Kaiju Noir, here with another multi-review. Sorry I couldn't get this out on time. Unfortunately, there have been some problems with my laptop, which has prevented me from making these reviews. With that said, let's take a look at these recent films. The first movie we have is Jurassic Park 3D. Despite my dislike of 3D movies in general, I felt like I had to watch this as Jurassic Park just so happens to be my favorite movie of all time. For those of you who don't know, Jurassic Park is a tale where paleontologists Dr. Alan Grant and Ellie Sadler and mathematician Dr. Ian Malcolm get invited by billionaire John Hammond to preview an island resort he is working on. Once they arrive, they find out that Hammond had his scientists at his company InGen clone and raise full-grown dinosaurs from the dino DNA found in fossilized amber-encased mosquitoes. While the three take a tour of the park with a lawyer and Hammond's two grandchildren, Nedry, a Jurassic Park employee in charge of the security systems, shuts down the security so that he could steal and sell dinosaur embryos to a rival company. This causes all of the dinosaurs to run loose, and now we have our protagonists running for their lives in hopes of escaping this paradise-turned-hell. Trust me when I say that this movie has aged very well. Everything from the characters, to the pacing, to the magnificent John Williams score is still just as memorable as they were 20 years ago. The moment where the characters are introduced to the brachiosaurs and the music swelling up is just pure movie magic, and seeing it again on the big screen just sent goosebumps down my arms. Now when it came to the special effects, they are still impressive to this day. The CGI effects are fantastic at night, though during the day the dinosaurs do look a little rubbery. While Jurassic Park is revered today for its revolutionary computer effects, many tend to forget how especially awesome the practical effects were. I tend to think of Jurassic Park as one of the last big-budget films to heavily rely on practical effects, as opposed to today where every little thing has to be CG rendered. In no way do these suits, puppets, and animatronics look fake in any way. I especially love the scene where the two kids, Tim and Lex, are hiding from the velociraptors in a kitchen, as I enjoyed seeing how the filmmakers kept switching between practical and CGI raptors. I was born in 1992, and Jurassic Park came out in 93. While I had the luxury of growing up with this film, I unfortunately never had the opportunity of watching it on the big screen. After finally watching the movie in theaters, I can definitely say that it was worth paying the price for 3D IMAX. The sound and the image were crystal clear and made every set piece even more majestic. As for the 3D, it wasn't noticeable nor was it distracting. Of course this movie wasn't made with 3D in mind back when it was made. And of course the reason why this movie was re-released in 3D at all is because Jurassic Park 4 is finally getting into production, so I'm assuming that they want to renew audiences' interest in the franchise. Jurassic Park is a fantastic movie through and through. If you love Spielberg movies, sci-fi thrillers, dinosaurs, or just good movies in general, I implore you to watch Jurassic Park. 5 out of 5. If the movie is still available in theaters by the time you watch this video, definitely watch it in 3D IMAX for the full experience. Otherwise, get it on Blu-ray or DVD. The second film I recently watched was Evil Dead, the remake of the 1981 cult classic The Evil Dead. A movie that spawned two sequels, multiple comic book series, and of course, the chainsaw and boomstick wielding hero, Ash Williams, played by Bruce Campbell. However, there is no Ash in this story, so can the remake live up to the original? Well, let's jump in and find out. Much like the original, Evil Dead starts off with a group of friends named Eric, Olivia, Mia, her brother David, and his girlfriend Natalie, arriving at a cabin in the middle of the woods. Unlike the original, where the characters came simply to hang out for the weekend, these protagonists came to help Mia get over her drug addiction. Eventually, the gang finds out that the cabin houses terrible and deadly secrets, along with the infamous Book of the Dead. Eric begins reading pages from the book, which unleashes a demon which goes after Mia. Once the demon possesses her body, it then proceeds to infect the others so that enough souls can be sacrificed to summon a great evil. This remake faithfully follows the story and the characters of the original, while putting its own spin on things, especially when it came to the ending. I actually like the idea of having Mia being a recovering drug addict, as it gives the other characters a reason not to take her seriously, thinking that she wants to leave because she can't kick her old habits. 
As for the family drama between Mia and David, I thought it was a bit cliché and not really that interesting. However, I did like the building relationship that came out of it. As for the other characters, they weren't that memorable, nor as interesting as Mia or David, but they suit their purpose of being cannon fodder. Though one character in particular gets to become a real trooper after being turned into a human pin cushion. This leads me to the film's main attraction, the gore. In most modern day horror films, I find the gore either uninspiring, like in the Friday the 13th remake, or too real and disturbing, like in the Saw series. In this movie, it features what I like to call fun gore, in that it goes all out with the dismemberments and blood in an almost cartoony manner. This is why I love movies like the Evil Dead trilogy, the Nightmare on Elm Street series, and Dead Alive. The advertisements have been referring to this movie as the most terrifying film you will ever experience. When most movie-going audiences think scary, they sadly tend to think of films that are jump-scare heavy. But for this movie, it's scary in an atmospheric, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening kind of way. So I am concerned that audiences will think that the advertisement is false. Hopefully, many will appreciate this movie's tone and atmosphere, and of course, the gore. And before I forget, this movie has probably the best use of sound I have ever heard in any other horror film. I don't want to go too in-depth with it, as I certainly don't want to spoil it for you. In my opinion, Evil Dead does live up to the original, though it's not as good enough to surpass it. The story is well executed, the characters are decent, and the setting and effects are great. In fact, there's a line of dialogue in the remake that best sums up this movie. In the original, that line is, I'll swallow your soul, while in the remake, it's, I'll feast on your soul. Like with the original movie, it's a minor change that doesn't add much to the original, but is serviceable nonetheless. I give Evil Dead a 4 out of 5, and I strongly recommend it to both fans and non-fans of the original. Also, be sure to stay after the credits. If there is one thing I like about remakes, is that they can introduce newcomers to the original. I noticed that the majority of people who went to see it have never even heard of Evil Dead before, so it strangely gave me a warm feeling knowing that there were people that were experiencing the same enjoyment that I got when I watched the original trilogy. I guess that's how I'll feel when Legendary Pictures Godzilla comes out next year. There is one thing I want to go over, however that involves both spoiling the ending and the little surprise at the end of the credits. So I'm giving a spoiler warning in 3, 2, 1. Okay. So at the end of the credits, it is revealed that this remake is actually connected to the original Evil Dead trilogy, meaning that Ash Williams is actually going to be coming back. While my first reaction was, oh my god, that is so awesome, yet at the same time it started making me wonder, how is it that the events of the original and the remake which is not really a remake anymore, come to think of it, just so happened to occur in the exact same fashion. I mean, at the end, you have the main character losing their arm and replacing him with a chainsaw, just like Ash Williams. So I'm wondering, how is it that these characters just so happen to have gone through the exact same thing that Ash and his friends went through in the original Evil Dead? Especially with the whole chainsaw and girl getting turned into a demon-possessed creature and whatnot. I mean, is Ash going to meet the character from the remake and going to say something along the lines of, Hey, so you cut your own arm off and replace it with a chainsaw, huh? I can sure relate to that. Or something like, I see, you decided to use a boomstick and a chainsaw. Good choice, I like your style. Maybe the Evil Dead sequel will be sort of like the comics, where Ash is traveling through dimensions, having crossovers with the likes of Marvel Zombies, Reanimator, and Darkman. Maybe the sequel will involve Ash traveling to another dimension, and that dimension just so happens to be where the Evil Dead remake takes place. I don't know, what do you think? Well, those are my thoughts on both Jurassic Park 3D, Evil Dead, and the Evil Dead ending in Stinger. Until next time, everybody, take care.